over the world, you'll find them. Roadside barbers in Durban, street vendors in New York City, waste pickers in Bangkok, pushcart vendors in India, vegetable hawkers in Toronto's Chinatown. Some call them informal workers, self-employed or micro-entrepreneurs. One thing is for sure, the informal economy is here to stay. Informal work is the main source of employment for the majority of the developing world. Those who work in the open air are most visible. The least noticeable are often women. Many earn their livelihoods as home-based workers and domestic workers. And for them, informal often means invisible. Women are the backbone of informal work in most developing countries. They endure long hours for low pay, with little to no legal or social protections, no safety regulations, no sick days. So what happens when something goes wrong? มะเร็งมะลงปอดเนาะไปไปนอนที่โรงพยาบาลก็คือการดูแลเค้าไม่ไม่ค่อยดีโฮมเนทมี established since 20 years ago uh, with the non government organization and home based worker groups at that time we try to advocate for the rights of home based worker we also part of the civil society who advocate for the uh, universal health care for uh, Thai citizens. In 2001, the ambitious 30 baht treats all scheme was set up to establish universal health care in Thailand. Even the poorest could access health care services. Today, it's called the Universal Coverage Scheme, or UCS. Private, formal sector workers are covered under a separate social security health scheme. Government workers also have their own medical benefit scheme, but not all health coverage is equal. อ่าเราก็ต้องหิ้วมันจะมีขวดให้เราใส่แต่ขอให้พยาบาลช่วยเค้าก็ไม่ช่วยเวลาเราปวดเราขอยาเค้าให้ยาพาราทั้งๆที
Sarda Benche Civil Ma. While public health care is free in India, limited services, lack of awareness, and accessibility remains a huge problem. So, most Indians, even the poorest, rely on private health care providers. But what really happens in the public uh, health uh, sector or public hospitals is the queues are long, the distance is too much, and it's very time consuming for them. They cannot afford to spend an entire day or even half a day going to a hospital because their earning for the day is lost. They prefer to go to a private hospital who's just next door. Kantaben was hospitalized after medicines did not cure her fatigue and 25-day fever. She had to pay out of pocket for two courses of medicines. Out of pocket health expenses create a cycle of debt and despair among India's poor. To meet the health needs of informal workers, Sewa offers low cost pharmacies, health insurance, health camps, and local diagnostic testing. The major gap that we have identified is education, and that's the reason we started the information center within the community. Sewa's community-based healthcare workers offer door-to-door -door education. They provide health information, referrals, and even accompany women to hospitals. A major focus is on preventative care. Gowri Ben has worked with 50 TB patients in her community. Sewa advocates nationally for more government investment in health care, focusing on primary health care coverage, diagnostic screening, more frontline health workers, free essential drugs, and better access to services. Sewa team is working with the other states to take our learnings to other states. So that's how we are trying to uh, scale it up. Durban is South Africa's third largest city. And this is Durban's busiest intersection. In this area, um, Warwick Avenue, um, it's between 450 to uh, half a million uh, people that walks through this area a day. Neglected and abandoned by the apartheid government, Warwick Junction underwent a renewal during the post-apartheid period. Today, the markets of Warwick includes between 5,000 and 8,000 vendors trading in nine distinct informal markets. After managing informal trading in Warwick for the city, Patrick and Lovu co-founded ASEA Itafuleni, an NGO designing inclusive urban spaces for informal workers. And they are contributing immensely to the economy of the county. That's why I, I support them. Although they're still paying for permits, there's no infrastructure provided. So they're exposed to extreme weather conditions. Those who cook have even more serious health concerns. Six days a week, Chloe Seely prepares cow's head meat and dumplings, a Zulu delicacy. Then one morning, the unimaginable happened. While she was hospitalized, police officials shut her operation down, even though her trading permit was paid in full. Had she had the extinguishing equipment nearby that was appropriate, clearly the outcome for her would have been very different. AET worked closely with the traders to design on-site first aid boxes. It's purposefully designed with vocabulary that's from the street, it's the trestle table, it's the pallet wood. 
Chloe Seely and her fellow traders also took part in AET-facilitated occupational health and safety courses. When accidents happen, they're much better equipped to handle them. Women are more disadvantaged than men because of their multiple responsibilities for their own health care and for their children and their elderly person and are likely to leave their own health problem until it is objectively too late. So what might health reform look like in an increasingly informal global economy? My biggest surprise in this is that in all three countries in different ways there is an absolute mechanism of exclusion because of either where you live or because you have to register at one health facility, either a clinic or a hospital. The answers range from national policy initiatives to more funding for preventative health care measures, better opening hours, shorter wait times, easy access to information, simple and efficient registration. I think a real overhaul of medication costs, the out-of-pocket costs, are exorbitant. By scaling successful healthcare models that address the needs of diverse workplaces, we can begin to address the full cost of healthcare. Because the cost of doing too little can be devastating. <laughs>